Hello and welcome to the Orkhammer YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry, the new skirmish combat game. And specifically we'll be talking about list building for the Iron Jaws faction. Now I've yet to play Warcry, so just a caveat, but um, I come up with this data as a way to build my initial lists, and I think I found some interesting findings and I'd like to share them. I've also gone through quite a number of other factions and I have all that data as well, so I'll be releasing a, a series of videos. But of course, since I like orcs the most, because they're the biggest and the meanest, I'm going to start with Iron Jaws. So let's get into the data. So I'm starting with an overall discussion of the Warband. This Warband, you get very good value for your number of wounds and your strength. Um, but the only limitation is obviously no ranged combat like Iron Jaws uh, in general. And also very slow move. This is even slower than in Age of Sigmar, where they're already a very slow faction. Here, the move characteristic of three across the entire warband. There is no fast option. So the entire thing is a, a very slow-moving, impending doom kind of warband. So it's very tough if they get into combat, but with the move characteristic of three, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get into combat. Now we can use our abilities and things to, to overcome that, short, that uh, shortcoming, but it is something that we're going to have to, to be careful with because in Warcry, it, it seems that we have a limited number of turns for a lot of these scenarios. So the fact that we can't move very far is going to limit um, the flexibility of this warband. You're going to need to kind of make a beeline straight to the objectives, I think, and uh, and not fuss around and uh, smack anything off the objectives that is in your way in, in good orc fashion. So you need a leader. Let's start talking about the leader options. First, we have the... A brute boss with the claw and brute smasher. Now this is the most popular brute boss option in Age of Sigmar, but this is a different game. Things might play out a little bit differently here. We have the brute boss with boss choppa option, which is slightly more points. It's five more points. We'll see if it's worth it. And we have an ard boy option. It's only the ard boy with the the choppa and smasher is is an option. So looking at these, um, obviously move three. Toughness 5. All the Brutes in, in this faction are going to be Toughness 5. All the Yard Boys are going to be Toughness 4, except for the one with the Shield. He'll be Toughness 5. We'll get to that later. Um, everything is armed with an Axe. And let's look at the... So, when we look at the, the damage and critical damage stats for all these attacks, which is the same between the Claw and Smasha and the Yard Boy boss... Um, if we compare them with the boss Choppa, it looks like the boss Choppa is a clear leader with which much, much more damage output, um, three instead of two and six crit instead of five crit, but you have to temper that with the fact that it's only three attacks as opposed to four. So sometimes reading these profiles, you can get very excited when you see high numbers in the damage column, but you have to keep in mind, you have to multiply that by the number of attacks to, to see where things land. The one standout in these these options here is the strength six from the brute boss with boss choppa. Uh, so far, I've only seen one other unit, and that is the um, ogre breacher from the iron golem faction that has a strength six attack. So strength six means there's currently only toughness three, four, and five in the game. So with a strength six attack, you're going to be guaranteed to have a stronger strength than any toughness you're going to be fighting against, which means all your attacks are going to be hitting on threes or better. Um, crits are only hitting on sixes. That's just across the board, so um, nothing special there. But strength six is very nice. So what does that mean from a math perspective? Um, we'll see that in a second. The This warband, I, this data takes a lot more than what you see here on the screen into account. I have the, the Ard Boy options or I have the, the, the troop options currently hidden, but across this warband you're going to see the, the, the total of the damage is 18, and the total of the crit damage comes to 42. So if, but the, taking a ratio of those two numbers, I keep, I'm keeping track of the, the critical ratio for each faction to see where they lie. It seems to be the average is 2.25, so in general, most warbands do 2.25 times their base damage, 
uh, when they critical. This warband is slightly above that with 2.33. Um, on the high end is like that I've seen so far is the the untamed beast that's over 2.5, and on the low end, I believe is the like iron golem that's just barely at two. So um, somewhere between two and two and a half is is a is a the range for critical ratio it seems, and that is, seems to be the way that this game encompasses the um the style of fighting versus of brute strength versus finesse fighting so finesse warband might have a higher critical ratio so um you're not doing consistent damage but then whenever you do land that that slippery low strength attack you can explode into a big critical with it so um, it's an interesting mechanic and uh, just something to, to be aware of so let's move on let's start seeing some some numbers on what we should spend Oops. Okay. Our first column here, um, price per wound. So if you take the number of wounds and divide it by the, the, or take the point value and divide it by the number of wounds, you get a very simple metric here, price per wound. Um, I don't think this is a great metric to, to go off of because of this whole toughness versus strength thing. So I think there's there's better way to look at this data. Because if you have, let's say you had a, a character that's, 20 wounds, and you have two characters with 20 wounds, and one of them's toughness 5 and one of them's toughness 3, um, they're, they're not equally as tough. The, the toughness 5 is going to take a lot more attacks to, to, to get through from most average enemies than the toughness 3 version of that. So what I've done here is I've these columns here where I say wounds versus strength 3, wounds versus strength 4, wounds versus strength 5, um, you don't need to, to worry about these numbers too much, but what I've done is kind of taken the maximum output from a strength three attack and saying, if the maximum of that, uh, attack profile is this, um, then th this is the number of, um, of those, this is the number of those attacks that are going to need to be attempted against this model to take it down. So if we had... So for example, here I have 70 in this first column against the Brute Boss. So this Brute Boss is toughness 5. If there's a strength 3 attacker who's doing a maximum of 5 attacks, or uh, 5 damage per, per activation, it's going to take him 14 activations of attack against this model on average to bring it down. Could be less, um, could be more. This, that would be average. So as you can see, um, since it's toughness five, the, that metric for strength three and strength four is the same. And against strength five, it's only going to, it would only take that if that was a strength five attacker who's doing a max of five damage per activation, it would take him 11 activations to take it down. So it, you don't need to concern yourself with it, with that too much. The next column, let me scroll. Next column that summarizes that a little bit would be this wounds average. So what I've done is I don't know how many strength three versus strength four versus strength five attacks there are going to be in the game. So I've just kind of taken them all and say I think they're probably evenly distributed. And I've, so I've just done a simple average of those three values. So you can see um, the wound output required to take this down is going to be 64.17 between those two. And then a wound output of... 39.17 to take down this Ardboy boss. So this is a different metric than the actual number of wounds. If we come back to the number of wounds, you can see 35, 35, 25. But since they're just different toughness values, this is a metric that takes the, the toughness and the wounds and combines them into a kind of an effective wounds value. So let's see how many points we're spending per effective wound. So if we take that number, uh, well, if we take the points value and divide it by that number, now we can get to see how much, how many points we're paying for durability on the tabletop. So the brute bosses, they're a little bit more price effective from a durability standpoint than the Ardboy boss. So 3.9 is a good value. 3.97, very similar values. And, uh, 4.85 is still not bad. I think the leaders are generally uh, a little bit more expensive. So the fact that we have leaders in this warband that are, that are 
uh, under four is a pretty pretty nice thing for this warband. All right, so that's all I need to say about durability. Let's move on to damage output. Okay, so in this set of columns, we have the average damage of these leaders versus toughness three, toughness four, and toughness five opponents. And we also have a column for the average damage in the same way that I did with the um, with the wounds. I've just taken these three and averaged them together, and that's where we get the average damage. So assuming that toughness three, four, and five are somewhat evenly distributed, like I said, going forward, that might not be the case, but for now, that's what I'm going with. And then, um, well, I'll just start out with the, the individual columns first. So we can see they're all pretty pretty close together uh, in against the toughness three and four. So in the above seven, and this is on average, they're doing 7.33 wounds per attack uh, against the toughness three enemy and 7.5 from the boss choppa. So same for three and four. And we start seeing a little difference here at, against toughness five enemies where we have the boss choppa doing pretty significantly more damage against toughness five enemies. So the he gets the job done and these other twos just don't in that department. And since he has that higher um, damage against Toughness 5, that's going to bring his average, keep his average locked at 7.5, which is a very high average damage output. So uh, the others are still pretty good. Like I said, these are good, um, strong leaders, but there's a lot of leaders that are in this range. But 7.5 is a pretty pretty remarkably good damage output. The points that you're paying for that damage, so let's look at that. And this is just the points value divided by the average damage column. So the the brutes are, you know, they're not a bargain, but they're not they're not terrible um, prices. A little bit cheaper points per damage, points per average damage on the boss choppa as we expected. Even though he has five points more expensive, his damage is a good bit higher and uh, that, that brings his his average down, average points. And the our boy boss is a cheaper buy on this column, so if you don't need that extra little push and uh, you're looking for a more efficient way to get a leader, like I said, you have to take a leader, so um, if you just want to save some, some points and you want to trim off the leader, eh, he might be an option to do it. But for me, I think building my warband, I'm going to, I want to see how this brute boss with boss choppa does in the next few games because I think he looks like a pretty good option, a pretty nice damage. It's only five points more than the basic one, and uh, I think I think he pays for that and that extra extra bit of damage output. All right, let's move on and look at our troop choices. So I had this broken up. We have a, we have three options for brutes and three options for ard boys. So the brutes we can have with the two brute choppas. We can have them with the gore choppa, which is the, the specialty weapon. You can only normally have one of in a five-man unit in Sigmar. And brute with the jagged gore hacker, which is the in Sigmar, that's the two-inch weapon variant, which is a little bit less popular. But as we'll see in the data, this has some interesting things. Let me go ahead and hide this... Uh, the leader data really quick so we don't get bogged down with the data. Okay, so like I said, everything is move three. All the brutes are toughness five, with the exception of the Ard Boy with the shield. He is toughness five as well. Toughness five is very nice. That, that makes you among the, the elite toughness in the game. There's nothing higher than that currently. Okay, everything is an axe in the entire faction. It's just axes all across. Even if the model has, you know, clubs or swords, it's all just considered axes. Currently, the, I don't think there's any rules that do anything special on, on specific weapon types like axes versus swords, but who knows what lays in store in the future of this game. So that might be something to keep in mind in the future. So the two... There's two options that are strength five in the brutes, the, the gore choppa and the gore hacka, uh, the jagged gore hacka. So that's interesting to note. And the regular two brute choppas is only strength four. So he's a bit more average, a bit more mundane uh, 
and that is the the more expensive variant. So the two brute choppa is 180 points. The gore choppa, the specialty weapon, is 200 points, and the jagged gore hacka is 140. So that's something to keep in mind. This 140, I think, is is an interesting is an interesting fact on this. So um, let's keep scrolling. Across the board, we have pretty good base damage, pretty average crits. And like I said, the crit ratio for this warband comes down to 2.33. So pretty, pretty mundane. Um, brute rune. We'll, we'll get into abilities later. All right. Interesting data here from a from for the brutes is the price per wound of the brute with a jagged gore hacker is very low. This is like uh, of all the warbands, this is one of your best buys that I've seen so far. He has, um, as we can see, his damage output is going to be pretty good, and his at at 140 points for what was it uh, 25 wounds, toughness five, like. He's going to be very worth it. Uh, a, a nice little beefcake to add to your roster. Everything else, price per wounds, is kind of average to to mediocre. The Gore Choppa, obviously not that great because he's expensive because of his special weapon. Uh, not a big deal. I think, for me, Jagged Gore Hacka is a really... This is a significant stat in, in this arsenal. Um... <clears throat> So the wounds against strength three attacks, wounds versus strength four, and wounds versus strength five. Like I said, this is a rough idea how mu how much of a beating this thing can take from these different strengths. So since the brutes are higher toughness than the yard boys, you're going to see them holding up better against the strength five attacks than the yard boys, which, which again are going to uh, fall over much quicker against those strength five attackers. And the average um, is going to bear that out as well. The the brutes have the higher average than the yard boys, and the remarkable thing here is points per average wound. When you factor in toughness and everything, the the brute with the jagged gore hacka is just an amazing buy at three points per average wound. So the amount of durability on the table on top for the number of points that you spend, he's pretty much without parallel as far as I, I've seen so far. I haven't looked at every single warband, but he's a he's a remarkable specimen. Moving on to damage. Okay. So damage versus toughness three, toughness four, and toughness five. Everything is uh pretty much as you would expect. Let's I'm gonna scroll a little bit over here so you can see the the average and uh points per average. So the brute with the special weapon, the Gore Choppa, he outputs a nice seven, um, on average, seven wounds per attack, which is which is nice. Not the best that I've seen. So there's some other warbands that have a few models that that do better, but he's certainly in that top tier of elite damage dealers. The remarkable thing uh, you would think I would have thought it, before I saw any of this data that you know the two brute Choppas would do better, maybe the Gore. You know, the, all the brutes would do better and maybe significantly better than the yard boys, but at the end of the day, they really aren't scoring that much higher than these basic yard boys. And um, well, obviously the one with the shield, because he only has one one-handed weapon, his his damage output is pretty paltry. So if you if you do take a shielded yard boy, you're doing it because you want a cheap way to get a toughness five twenty you know, 25 wound, or was it 15 wound model on the table, um, he does not dish out that much damage at all. So he, he's kind of a waste from a, a damage output perspective. The regular ride boys are pretty nice values for that. But um, yeah, I think for me, the troop option winner is this brute with jagged gore hacker. I think for the 140 points, with these stats, uh, I'd be surprised if this isn't a popular option for people's warbands. He, he just, that's just great numbers. Uh, he, he does decent number of attacks, strong, tough, resilient. Move three is, but the whole, you're not going to be playing this faction if you want to move faster than move three. So there's no better option. I think he's a strong buy, undervalued perhaps. We'll see how it plays out, but 
That's my opinion on that. Um, okay. I'm not really sure, as far as the Ard Boys are concerned, I, I'm not really sure on the, the 15 points extra for the for the Orc Forged Shield version of the Ard Boy. If we scroll over to look at the... Um, so, like I said, we're, we're not focusing on that model for its... Um, for its damage output, but it's rather it's it's tankiness the way it can uh, be resilient on the table, and you can see, oops, um, for a model whose whole job is going to be pretty much to take damage, his price per wound is startlingly high, higher than even the basic non-shielded versions. So um, that's not a great thing. Um, points per average wound. He scores slightly better than them. So that extra toughness, um, that's where the, the points per wound isn't a great metric. I would trust, I would favor this metric if you're looking at uh, resiliency. So he is slightly better. But you got to ask yourself, is this little bit of extra points per wound, is that worth it given the, the rather large drop-off in points per average damage? Now, in constructing a list, I've come up with some mock lists, and I have ended up taking the Orc Forge Shield just because, like, if I'm targeting a 1,000 point level, you, there's not a lot of flexibility. If you look at all of these, if you look at the point values of Iron Jaws, unfortunately, they're all relatively high point values. I mean, uh, m most other warbands have sub 100 point fighters and this warband doesn't so you will get into a position where you potentially have you know if you it's like oh i, I want to put a lot of jagged gore hackers in there and if you need a few of those and a leader you're going to run into this thing where you're going to have uh potentially you know lots of points left over but not enough points left over to buy an entire ard boy so in that case it might be worth the 15 points just to throw an extra five toughness model on the table because you know that your brutes and your leader are going to be the ones getting the job done in the damage department so um it's really up to you i, I it remains to be seen yet what the the penalty to leaving points on the table is going to be um so if you left 15 or 20 points from your max like how how easily that's going to translate to hurting yourself on the table it might not be a big deal, but so I think the regular art boys are a better buy, but I can see situationally where spending the extra points because there's really not another way to spend those points in your list. Maybe go ahead and take the shield. So flipping over to abilities, they have some very characteristic abilities and some of these are designed to to overcome the single weakness. Like I said, the single weakness you have in this warband is lack of movement move three characteristics can make make it very tough but your wah ability here so this is used at the beginning uh so if you activate your leader early they can use this wah ability it's a triple uh use the, a triple dice so it's a little bit pricey but um, that will add the value of the dice to the move characteristic so then you could combine that with things like the charge ability and um there's a few other options here and so basically you can spin that to to make up for the obvious shortcoming of uh, the slow movement in this warband but other warbands can move fast without having to spend those abilities. So it's a it's an unfortunate that you have to waste your um, your your specialty dice to to overcome this this shortcoming. But once you overcome that shortcoming and you're able to use these abilities, all of a sudden you you show up right in people's face with some really tough, mean, scary orcs. So uh, I like this warband. I think it's going to be tricky to play. It's not going to be an easy warband to play and be be victorious with. But um, I like that you can put a lot of meat on the table pretty cheaply and pretty scary. There's and there's not a lot of weak chaff that you're going to have to to worry about losing to a to a, a poor play. So in summary, I'm going to build my first list with the Brute Boss with Boss Choppa as a leader, because I think he's a good buy, very strong damage output, worth that extra five points, I think. I'm going to take a Brute 
with Gorchapa for a tip of the spear type offensive potency. For a non-leader, he has very good damage output. And But the bulk of my list is going to be built around the Brutes with Jagged Gorhaka because I think, particularly if you're buying multiple of them, that you're saving 40 points each time you buy one versus the two brute choppas and it just at that 40 points is just uh that's just a great value for what you're getting so i'm going to save a lot of points by by bulking out my list with jagged gore hackers and i should have enough points left over to take uh an ard boy with the orc forge shield and we'll see how i do but i think that's a good core uh, i think six Six-man team for just under a thousand points. We'll see how I do. Let me know how you do. Let me know if you have any different thoughts. And uh, I will be releasing uh, Bone Splitters rundown and Gloom by Gets rundown in the near future, followed up by the Chaos factions that have currently been been released. Because that's all I all the information I have currently. But uh, there's some interesting findings in all of those. So see you next time.